Hi, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about LEDs and answer a question that we've been getting, um, which is some people have said their LEDs haven't worked. And upon digging a little further, what we think was happening was people were testing their LEDs when they get them directly on their battery packs before plugging them into the squishy circuits. Um, and I wouldn't recommend trying this at home. I'm going to put on some safety glasses and I'll show you why this is a bad idea. If I take my LED and I attach it to the battery pack, positive to positive, negative to negative, uh, watch the LED closely because this will go fast, you'll notice that it flickers and then turns off and probably smells bad. And what happened was I burned out the LED. Uh, LEDs have a maximum current and a maximum voltage that they can have entering into them, um, flowing across them. If you exceed this, in the best case scenario, you'll burn them out. In the worst case scenario, um, you could actually cause your LED to pop. Um, so you never want to put your LED directly on your battery pack, um, particularly the LEDs that have lower uh, input currents and input voltages, such as the red ones. Okay. So how do you figure out what the maximum voltage that your LED and current that your LED can handle is? Well, you want to look at the specification sheets when you buy your LEDs. Um, so for example, that red LED that I just burned out, it had a, a maximum current of 25 milliamps and a maximum voltage of 2.2 volts. So to figure out what that means and why that's important, let's look at the circuit diagram for a, an LED circuit. So there's like four components that go into a circuit. First, you need your power source. And for us, that's going to be the battery. So let's draw our battery here. Make sure we label it, because we'll refer back to this diagram. Okay. And then we've got our wire leaving the battery. In our case, right, this could be the dough. Then we need a resistor. And what the resistor does is it cause, causes the current and the voltage to drop. Once it's gone through the resistor and we've lowered our, our current and voltage, then we go through the light emitting diode. And this is our LED symbol. And then as we've discussed before, you need to have your current running in a closed circuit. So we have to close it. Okay. And now for us, note that we don't actually plug resistors into the squishy circuits because our dough, this isn't really a wire, it's a wire plus a resistor. So for us, we can replace this with a lump of our squishy circuit dough. If you want to look at the, the, the math behind this, there's a very useful formula we can use, which is called Ohm's Law. And Ohm's Law says that in a circuit, V is equal to I R. So this is Ohm's Law. Yeah. The V is the voltage through the circuit. V we measure in volts. I is the current, and we measure the current in amps. R is the resistance. And we measure resistance in ohms, um, which if you want the Greek symbol for that, pluralize that. The Greek symbol for that, which you'll sometimes see on your specification sheets, is the omega. All right, so V is equal to IR. All right, so this is our, our, our circuit diagram again. We start with our battery, we go through our resistor, we go through our LED, and we complete the circuit returning to the battery. And we just said that Ohm's law said that V was equal to IR. And we're going to see how this relates to our, 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 our particular LEDs, particularly when we're using the squishy circuits. Now, we're using a 6-volt battery pack, so we'll, we'll label that in. And an important thing to know about circuits is if we start at 6 volts here, we have to dissipate 6 volts by the time we return back to the battery. So if we were to measure with a multimeter, we were to measure the voltage drop across the resistor and the voltage drop across the LED, it's got to equal the 6 volts. So we'll say V battery has to be equal to the voltage across the resistor, I'll draw the little resistor symbol, plus the voltage drop across the LED. All right. Well, we know then that it's 6 volts for the battery. And for the red LEDs, when I went to the specification sheet, I found out that for my red LED, we'll use a red marker, for my red LED, said that Vmax was 2.2 volts. And my maximum current was 30, I'm forgetting, oh, was 25 milliamps. Now, one note about milliamps here. We said for Ohm's law, V equals IR, the V was in volts. The current was in amps. 
and the resistance was in ohms. So if you ever have a specification sheet that gives you the current in milliamps, they probably will for, for LEDs, be sure to convert that into amps uh, when you're using Ohm's law. So let's convert that. We know that one amp is equal to 1,000 milliamps. So 25 milliamps is going to be equal to 0, 2, 5 amps, or 25,000 of an amp. So 0 0.025 amps. Okay, so now we know that our 6 volts is going to be, have to be equal to the voltage drop across the resistor plus our maximum voltage drop across our LED, so 2.2 volts. That means that we need our voltage across the resistor, our drop, to be equal to 6 volts minus 2.2 volts, which is equal to 3.8 volts. So we'll put this in a little box to remind us that we want V across the resistor to be equal to 3.8 volts. Well, now we can use Ohm's law just across our resistor and say that the voltage across the resistor is equal to the current across the resistor times the resistance of the resistor. Well, we've solved for V, right? We know it's 3.8 volts. And we're trying to find R, but we also need to know I. Now, unlike the voltage, the current through a circuit is the same throughout the circuit. So if we can measure the current across the LED, that's the same as the current across the resistor. And conveniently, we were already told what our maximum current is. Uh, for our, our LED, so we'll use that to calculate what our resistor needs to be. So we can now plug in 0.025 amps. And we still don't know what that needs to be, but that's okay, that's what we're solving for. So then we can say that the R across the resistor, and I'll push this up a little bit, the R across the resistor has to be equal to 3.8 volts divided by 0.025 amps. And when we calculate that, we get 152 ohms. So that has to be the resistance of the resistor we put in the circuit before the LED. Now, in our circuit, if we look at it again, we don't have an actual tangible physical resistor that you buy at an electronics store, right? We're using our squishy circuit dough. So what that means is that we need a, a lump of squishy circuit dough that has a resistance of at least 152 ohms. Now, if you have greater than that, that's okay, because look back at Ohm's law. If you, have a greater if you have a greater resistance, if R went up, that means that the voltage drop across there would also go up. That means that you would have a lower um, <clears throat> voltage going into the LED, and it's less likely to burn out. So that's okay, but we want to make sure that we have at least 152 ohms. So how do we figure that out? Well, we have to measure the resistance of the dough. Um, when we first started the Squishy Circuit Project, um, we did take a bunch of measurements of the resistance, and it was pretty reliable that for this dough, right, our purple recipe, if you had a cylinder that was roughly one centimeter um, in diameter, that the resistance for each centimeter that you added was about uh, 80 ohms. So as long as you have about two centimeters of dough between your battery pack's positive red lead and the LED itself, you should have a high enough resistance that your LED won't burn out. Um, this summer, the summer of 2011, we are going to be spending some time in the lab taking lots and lots of resistance measurements measuring it different ways. We'll be sure to post some videos and some data. But for the time being, as long as you've got a decent sized chunk of dough, you know, a couple centimeters, put an inch of dough between your battery pack and your LED, you shouldn't risk burning it out. Now another thing to keep in mind is that different resistors have different minimum voltage and currents. Um, red is actually sort of the worst case scenario. It's the one you're most likely to burn out. If, if you're a little worried about this, we recommend getting blue LEDs. They have the highest um, current uh, that they can handle without burning out which means they need less of a resistor before you get to them. Good luck. Um, let us know if you have any questions. We'd be happy to answer them um, either, either on the website or in another video. Have fun and thanks for listening.